Good morning, everybody. It is so wonderful to be with you all on this uh, graduation weekend uh, when we have at least one and hopefully more um, Arlington High School graduates with us. Uh, we are celebrating with them today. Uh, reminder that this is being recorded and will show up on um, GNAT TV and our YouTube channel later in the week. Um, and the one thing I wanted to uh, reinforce, and you would have gotten it in the email, is that we are going to meet next Sunday in person. Um, not as close as we'd like to be, not in the building that we love, but outside on, in the green space next to Dunlap Hall. If any of you have a pop-up tent we can borrow just for the morning, we, I would really appreciate it. The Langs are going to don't give us, loan us some. We own one as a church, but we need more. The, th the things you need to bring with you when you come to church next Sunday on the green space, and this is a trial to see how it goes, is please bring a lawn chair for each of your family members that are going to participate um, and wear a mask. And um, know that we will be out. Some people will be in the sun if you want to be, and we're under the, hopefully, the multiple pop-up tents that we have, and we're going to space everybody out. We're going to mark where you would sit where you would put your lawn chair so that you are safely at least six feet apart. Uh, there, we will not probably have you singing. We will um, have music uh, and I might find another way for you to participate. But as we know, um, singing is like the number one way that whatever comes out of your mouth comes out of your mouth. So uh, we will try to be creative in how we um, do music. That's about it for now, for as far as uh, announcements go. Uh, just, an, uh, just to let you know, yes, we are still looking for snacks for summer lunch that began this past week that will run through the whole summer. Uh, and so you're welcome to put them in our, the garage. Uh, the door is open, there's a box there for them, or send money, or um, bring them by on Tuesday morning at 11, or Tuesday afternoon between 3.30 and 5.30 to the high school where we are doing our uh, packing in the morning and distribution in the afternoon. And finally, I'd invite you today to the uh, silent vigil that will be in front of um, St. James lining on routes on 7A. Last week there were 60 of us out there. Um, all of you are invited to be a part of that. It is a silent vigil. It is only 30 minutes and you're welcome to make signs that um, express the feelings you have at this um, hard time. So if you um, feel so moved, please join us this afternoon at one o'clock. At this point, uh, I'm going to ask Scott to uh, screen share our um, video that Mary uh, recorded, this, that, we re that I recorded of Mary this week, and it is uh, Lord Who's Love Through Humble Service, and if you have the bulletin information, uh, you have the words to the hymn. Thank you.
Let us pray. Holy One, who, who we so often don't recognize, come into our midst and make your presence known. Renew our strength, refresh our imaginations, retool our weary efforts to carry your peace into the world. Amaze us with your power to make all things new. And let us face your world with curiosity and hope. In the name of the one who leads us on the way, Jesus the Christ. And now let us offer together the words that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Karen, I'm going to ask you to unmute your phone. And Karen's now going to offer um, a celebration or an honoring of our graduating seniors, who part, especially those who are were active in our church. It's my pleasure. And um, although they're not all gathered here today, as we had hoped, hopefully the, they can catch these words on GNET. And uh, Ariana, we appreciate you making this effort today for the second time. <laughs> Ariana Barrios, Carolyn Crawford, Grace Catrick, Holly Hill McDermott, and Matthew Ritchie. On behalf of the Federated Church of East Arlington, we congratulate you on your graduation and your achievements in scholastics, in athletics, and in spiritual growth. To the youth group, we thank you for your many contributions to this church family and to the community of Arlington. In the past five or six years, you have served dinners, had bottle drives, community fun fests, pet show, uh, talent show. Remember the lion sleeps tonight? Uh, the summers of vacation Bible school. Couldn't have done those without you. Norman's Attic, high tea, and uh, oh, the, the apple making process of chopping and peeling 200 apples once. <laughs> there are many examples of your selfless service, and we hope that they offer you as much pleasure and as many good memories as they've brought to those who worked with you. We're truly <clears throat> grateful. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. You're on your own, and you know what you know. You are the one who'll decide where you go. I think probably, if not all of you, at least a few of you received Dr. Seuss's book on where you're going to go. But it goes further than that. God has a lot to do with where you'll go and a lot to do with your achievements that you've made, your intelligence and your ability. His hand is always working. Remember that it was he and it is he who gave you your intelligence and your abilities. And while you're at it, remember that God is always with you. Good times and bad times, the happy times and the stressful moments and the times that you are in peace with yourself and your surroundings. Always speak with him. Give him your fears and your concerns and also Share your joys and your successes with him as you would any father. When your decisions are especially difficult, bring them to God. Pray with him. Then, with his help, you can decide where you go. Because you go with God. 
I leave you 2020 graduates of Arlington Memorial High School with the scripture found on the back of the bookmark given to you with your plants yesterday. It's from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 29, verses 11 through 13. And these are God's words. I know the plans I have in mind for you. They are plans for peace, not disaster to give you a future filled with hope. When you call me and come and pray to me, I will listen to you. When you search for me, yes, search for me with all your heart, you will find me. Blessings on these words. And God bless each of you and keep each of you. And may he lift his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Good luck. Amen. Whoops. Thank you, Karen. Um, now is our time that we uh, We'll share our joys and concerns, and uh, I'm going to unmute. I'm going to ask you all if you have a joy or concern to unmute yourself and say your name and speak up. Um, initially, I'll offer that we're praying this today with um, our friends at the United Church of West Rutland. We obviously add our congratulations and blessing to all of the yesterday's graduates from Arlington. Uh, by way of concern, I would lift up, um, continue to lift up Josh Bushy, who did return home from the hospital this week. I would also lift up um, his brother, Derek, who, as Josh was coming home, was being airlifted himself to Albany Med from, as a result of a car accident. He is now home also. Um, prayers are asked for Linda and others who are suffering from anxiety. Uh, at this point, if you have additional joys or concerns to lift up, please unmute yourself and just say your name and I'll call on you. Anybody? Hi, um, it's Gloria. Hey, Gloria. Um, just um, another congratulations to all the 2020 graduates and all that they had to endure throughout the year and um yeah that's it i guess <laughs> thank you gloria sure. anybody else well then i will uh Take all of these in, uh, into consideration and let us be in prayer together. Lord God, we give you thanks for all your gifts to us, for daily food, for health, for each breath we take, for freedom to choose and for the gifts of your word, your power and your love, as well as the gift of the United Church of West Rutland and the gift of all those new lives, all um, of our graduates who are going out into the world and have done this um, graduating amid not so great circumstances, but having made the most of it. And we celebrate with them and with their families and offer our thanksgiving. Our hearts are truly overwhelmed, O oh God, when we consider how you have entrusted so much to us. May we be worthy of that trust. May we be a people who are unafraid to live as fully and as richly as you want us to live. We are thankful for these students, Ariana, Carolyn, Holly, Grace, Matthew, and all their classmates who have persevered in their studies, especially during this pandemic, as they begin the next leg of their journey. Bless this life passage as a doorway into new life, life that is connected with you, O oh God, in all ways. May ambitions be tempered by your call. May we all listen closely to what you would have us do, no matter what the world tells us. 
Help us, O God, as followers of Jesus, to multiply all that you have given us, to risk spreading your word and perhaps see it misunderstood, to gamble by loving those whom others think worthy only of hate, to take chances by doing good to those who have not done good to us. Help us be faith-filled and desire to increase your glory and your goodness in this world. Make us people who share in both word and deed that which you have given to us. We pray for the church gathered today from far and wide and that it may encourage all of its members to discover, develop, and use all our gifts, those of nature and those of grace. We pray for those who are poor in body or in spirit, for those oppressed and heavy laden, for those sick or in despair. Today especially we lift up healing prayers for Josh and Derek and Linda and all those others we know who are struggling today. Minister by your spirit and by us to all those for whom we have prayed and help us walk faithfully in the path of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. We all have gifts to offer. Some of those gifts are monetary, and some of those gifts are gifts of acts of love and charity and generosity. So we would ask you to consider the gifts you're able to offer, and uh, we, you can, if you need help figuring out a way to do it electronically, Sandy's here to do to help you with that. Um, or you can send a check in uh, because the work of the church continues even when we're not in that building that means so much to us. At this point now, the video um, that you're going to see is of Patty uh, sharing with us, Oh Holy City, Scene of John. Allison, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself and share with us the, today's scripture reading. Sure. Today's scripture reading comes from Matthew, starting in chapter 9, verse 35, and going through chapter 10, verse 8. And today I'm reading to you from the message. Then Jesus made a circuit of all the towns and villages. He taught in their meeting places reported kingdom news, and healed their diseased bodies. 
healed their bruised and hurt lives. When he looked out over the crowds, his heart broke. So confused and aimless they were, like sheep with no shepherd. What a huge harvest, he said to his disciples. How few workers. On your knees and pray for harvest hands. The prayer was no sooner prayed than it was answered. Jesus called twelve of his followers and sent them into the ripe fields. He gave them power to kick out the evil spirits and to tenderly care for the bruised and hurt lives. This is the list of the twelve he sent. Simon, they called him Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, Zebedee's son, John, his brother, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, the taxman, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, Judas Iscariot, who later turned on him. Jesus sent his 12 harvest hands out with this charge. Don't begin by traveling to some far off place to convert unbelievers. And don't try to be dramatic by tackling some public enemy. Go to the lost, confused people right here in the neighborhood. Tell them that the kingdom is here. Bring health to the sick. Raise the dead. Touch the untouchables. Kick out the demons. You have been treated generously, so live generously. Thank you, Allison. Ready or not, out they go. Yesterday, Arlington senior class in a service like no other high school has ever experienced, masked and seated with their family and apart from each other, they were sent to fly like an eagle as the Steve Miller band song went at the end of the ceremony, sending them on their way. Trained over these last three months by a pandemic they couldn't control, these graduates now know how adaptable they can be to a changing world where hard things happen and their comfort and skill with technology and working online will sometime have been worth all that frustration. They've learned how to take care not only of themselves, but of others with masks and social distancing. Some have celebrated birthdays with drive-by parties, and all of them dealt with the disappointment in missing out on sports and concerts and prom and senior trip. They had to learn how to work within a confined space and how much patience is a gift that will serve them well, especially with family. They found out the hard way that friendships can survive even when you aren't there in person to laugh with or console or commiserate with each other. And now with hard goodbyes, they venture out into jobs and training and college and military service, expected to live as adults while still finding their way in the world. COVID-19, experienced by these young adults, has given this class of 2020 the push into a significantly altered world that may help them make their mark with a compassion that has the potential to change the course of human history. Jesus here is pushing the 12 apostles out of the nest. He has been showing them how to be church by his movement. He is not attached to a single location, but rather has so much good news to share that he is on the move constantly, seeking out the outcasts and embracing them, offering the sick a path toward wholeness and bandaging up the hurts that the walking wounded have been carrying alone. He had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless. Jesus both moved and was moved. We have not been able to gather for three months now in the 170 plus year old building that is so dear to us. We have been pushed out of that nest 
and back into more time spent still at home. What if instead of bemoaning that fact or getting too comfortable showing up every Sunday morning in slippers and sitting in a favorite chair, we were gearing up for what Jesus has modeled for his disciples and thus for us. Maybe this time of Zoom church and phone call check-ins and reliance on email and texts is preparation for something more. We all know that at some point we will return to a changed world that somewhat resembles the one that slipped away three months ago. We have not stopped being church. How we are church when we don't have a building to give us our identity is where we're at now, especially when there's social isolation, economic insecurity, and demonstrations and call to action in the aftermath of George Floyd's death. Two weeks ago, the writer Anne Lamott shared on her blog what she was missing amid all the turmoil. And this is what she said. I wish I had my Sunday school kids today. During the devastation of the pandemic and the terrifying images of murder and protest, I would tell that I am lost too, she says. But from the wise old pinnacle of my years, I would assure them that we can trust God no matter how things look and how long things take. She continues, the pain inside us and right in front of us is nothing compared to the power of love that surrounds us. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I, as the psalmist says. That's what we have, all of us, to offer as church. We are so much more than our beloved building. Our work is to be a loving and life-giving presence in a hurting world. How to be Christ's body to the world. Dream with me for a few moments. What could we be now during the hurting and later when the healing is happening? Who needs us most? And these buildings we love, how might we offer them as a brick and mortar extension of the body of Christ? Just as our graduates have been given a loving push out of the nest of safety and nurture, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> just as our graduates have been given a loving push out of the nest of safety and nurture to go into the world to make a difference so too are we as disciples of jesus being given a loving shove by the state of the world to be agents of change and healing now, I know we may not encounter lepers to cleanse or dead bodies to bring back to life, but we can be the hope with arms and legs and hearts and minds that can lift up those who are looking for proof of a living God. Each of us together and apart get to share what we know of that powerful and ever-present love of God. To quote the late, great tennis player and humanitarian, Arthur Ashe, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. Amen. Let us now uh, join in uh, our closing hymn, which is sent forth by God's blessing that we will see on video.
May the memories of grace shared this hour be a delight and inspiration to us. May the Most High increase charity in us. May the sun of heaven shine through us. May the winds of love move us to compassion and service. May we go forth, God seeing in our eyes, God touching with our hands, God caring through our generosity. Amen. Let us go now and be church. Peace be with you. And you can unmute yourself now. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Have a good week. Have a good week, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye everyone. Have a good one. Good to see you, Carolyn. And Alan. See all Have a you. good week from South Jersey. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Good to see you, Molly. Thank you, Fred. Bye, everybody. Bye. Where where do you put the food that you bought for the summer program? Um, oh, if you come to the parsonage, if you you know the parsonage at 102 across the street from the church, um, there's a there's two garage doors and big doors, but then there's a door that you open with a doorknob to the garage, and if you just open that door, you will see a box right inside of it, and okay, you so leave it there. It's across the street from the church where you park, kind of? Yeah, right next to the parking lot. Yeah, okay. That's, yeah, so, yes, so that's where you can drop <laughs> off some package snacks. All right, I will do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Oh, Kathy? Yes.